what's going on guys it's Eric here with travel and trading so we're gonna make this video here and this is gonna be all about pretty much an intro into chart patterns for beginners um, I want this video to be quick simple to the point so of course in the beginning of the video I'm gonna list the objectives and the charts we're gonna be covering so if you already know all those charts skip on move to the next video go watch something else do something better with your time because <laughs> you probably already know this information but if you don't and you need to you know either get a refresher or just kind of you know get some help on identifying what chart patterns that most people are you know looking at and seeing um, then this video will be good for you to kind of you know sit through and, and learn all right so do me a favor guys if you you know enjoyed this video give me that thumbs up definitely appreciate that um, you know and try to soak in as much of this as you can uh, you know if you need to watch it a couple of times do so the point of this video is just so that you can be exposed to you know chart patterns that are there and you'll find more information about them all over the internet I'm trying to condense this and make this as quick and easy as possible so we're just gonna cover the top 10 in this video for those of you who have the course and all that good stuff and if you're you know viewing this video in the course then you'll get a lot more information and we gotta go through a lot more detail and spend <laughs> a lot more time on it but this section here is just gonna be a crash course for you guys who just need to you know get familiar with it you know and then just kind of learn from there you can all right so without further ado let's go ahead and get into it and learn a little bit more all right ladies and gentlemen welcome to the introduction to chart patterns here so this video is going to be very basic straight to the point we're just going to cover a few chart patterns that i think you guys you know need to learn um if you're watching this on the youtube channel we're going to cover pretty much the top 10 um patterns that are out there so that you know what other traders are looking at as well too um, or use these as part of your trading strategy however you want um, overall I just want you to kind of learn these trading patterns because they're going to be very important for you to be able to recognize um, as a trader and you know just be able to help give yourself a better edge in the market okay um, if you're watching this on the course uh, you know afterwards we're going to have a lot more detail that we're going to go into about things um, and we're going to cover some other patterns as well too um, and I'll show you guys real-time examples and all that good stuff here and we'll you know just kind of dive in a little bit more on things you need to know about chart patterns that you don't really get to find online and stuff like that so let's just kind of go ahead and you know get an idea of what we're looking at here um, you know classic patterns um, are really great for technical analysis um, specifically when you're doing like trend research um, you know, usually they'll appear as like a bunch of formations, you know, at the end of a trend. Um, they might signify uh, whether things are going to be continuing the way they are or whether they're going to be reversed. Um, however, you know, unlike the, the candlestick patterns that I teach you guys as well, too, classic, pal uh, classic patterns, they're rarely, you know, exclusively reversal or continuation. Um, most of them, they act as, you know, both, but statistically, you know they tend to continue uh, or reverse the trend okay and you'll see that as we go over these here uh, in, a, in, in a second um, another difference is that you know candlestick patterns they appear you know as immediate local configurations of several different candles um, you know generally from like one to five uh, you know or a specific shape and location while classic patterns you know they take their time to form um, completely and you know a, a couple of weeks maybe even several months in general um, and, you know configuration of individual candlesticks you know don't matter in this kind of pattern um, you know it's all about the shapes and the lines and the angles that they form together um, you know and typically uh, a classic pattern is identified you know when a specific time period over you know several lines have attributed to you know make certain conditions and again you'll we'll see that as we we'll go over them in a different time frames um, and you know the conditions are defined based on you know the pattern type uh, but you know all of them consist of a combination of trend lines of support and resistance as you can kind of see in this you know little bit in this little example right here um, you know a trend line is a line that runs through the top and you know the top and the bottoms um, and they have you know definite slopes of being either up or down um, you know tops are you know like peaks and bottoms are you know like troughs 
And there are, you know, local price reversal points and things like that. So kind of keep that in mind um, when you're, you know, looking at the chart patterns and things like that. When certain systems might detect, you know, a special configuration of trend lines or support and resistance, um, you know, showing the number of necessary reversals, typically the system will notify you that a pattern has occurred. And I'll show you guys how to be able to, you know, find that in the systems as well, too, for those of you who have, are viewing this in the course. Um, so just kind of keep, you know, all that stuff into consideration as we go over this. While, you know, being within a, a classic pattern, um, you know, often seen as a sideways trend, the price will, you know, usually accumulate uh, power to break through either up or down, you know, one of the lines. And, you know, it can then move, you know, to a reversal or a continuation, okay? Um, so let's kind of go ahead and just discuss the different patterns that are there and we'll, you know, review them a little bit live here as well too. And throughout this, you'll see me doing it in real time. So what is our main objective here? We're just really wanting to cover, um, you know, the, the top 10 chart patterns that there is. And again, those of you who, you know, are, are viewing this video on the course, you know, like I said, we're gonna go over a lot more, in more detail, um, and kind of get to the finite root of things, and just touch on things that, you know, I didn't know when kind of discovering this stuff here. Um, but these are the, you know, top patterns we're gonna cover here. We're gonna cover a symmetrical t triangle, ascending triangle, descending triangle, a bullish pennant, bearish pennant, flag, head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders, a double top, and a triple top, okay? Um, and of course, if you already know all these, you know, patterns already, no need to watch the rest of this video. <laughs> You're good to go, but if not, let's take a look at it and I'll go over in detail how these things work. Um, but ideally, what I want you to get from this too is to get the visual idea of what these patterns look like so you'll know exactly how to identify them and you know what they look like and again for those of you who are you know viewing this in the course you'll be able to see exactly how you know I show you how to find them and what to look for um, and I'm gonna also show you like you know other different patterns that are not listed here we're gonna go over some more patterns uh, so it's a lot more information there and of course, you know, um, I'm gonna show you which ones are most profitable, how to measure the risk to reward in each of them. Because I know when I started out in the beginning, you know, learning about triangle patterns and all these other patterns that are there, I always wondered like, you know, when do you start to, you know, form the pattern? How does, you know, how does that work? How does this work? It was so many questions I had. So we're gonna cover all that here in this section um, for those of you who are in the course. But right now, let's just touch on the top 10 patterns that a lot of traders look for so you can know what to look for too. All right, first and foremost is the triangle patterns. Um, these are probably the most basic, common patterns that, you know, trading 101, you know, traders start with, okay? So the triangle pattern is sometimes called a symmetrical pattern. Um, and it's a triangle since, you know, uh, it doesn't have a defined slope, um, you know, as like an ascending triangle or a descending triangle. The only difference between the only difference is being like the absence of like a horizontal support or resistance line. It's kind of the difference. It's not, you know, being the one that was there. Okay. Um, the geometry is the same um, in the other two triangles, like it's ascending and descending. Um, the price is, you know, typically bound between two converging lines. And each line is going to contain at least two peaks um, or bottoms, depending on which one you're looking at. So the close resemblance between the symmetrical triangle is going to be the ascending and descending triangle, which are these two right here. Uh, the triangles already implies that, you know, that they have like shared patterns, obviously because they're triangles, um, you know, in both uptrends and downtrends. They deliver, you know, breakouts in either direction, whether it be up or down. So keep that in mind uh, throughout the pattern formation. Um, you know, volume is most likely to either, you know, fall, but, you know, several other patterns, breakouts happen, you know, heavy volume shows, you know, better results. So, for example, like here with the symmetrical triangle, you can see this, oops, sorry, you, you can see that this is formed, um, you know, once a run-up has happened, and you'll notice that the price is bouncing in between here, 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 here. So, the highs, uh, the lows are getting higher, and the highs are getting lower, and together, this is forming a symmetrical triangle, okay? 
and you'll see that in the price action. And then there's the ascending triangle where the lows are getting higher. After a run-up has happened, the lows are getting higher, but there's a lot of resistance here at the top. And eventually what happens is as these you know, lows get higher and higher, boom, they push through. One of my favorite you know, patterns to trade is the ascending triangle. Then there's the descending triangle where after a big drop or a rundown, the stock tries to bounce back up, but as it's bouncing back up, it's, the highs are getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower until it eventually breaks down some more. Okay, um, so that's kind of how those you know play out. Let's kind of look in you know in, into a little bit more detail. Now with the ascending triangle, and you know this is kind of very important because you know I didn't know this in the beginning as well too. But with ascending triangles, they're going to be you know defined. Again, with two lines, you know, one horizontal and one, you know, rising above, you know, in an uptrend right here, okay? So, excuse me. Um, basically, it's describing the perfect conditions of the ascending triangle forming, which means, like, the overall signal of strength is kind of set to the maximum. But there's rare occasions where you'll find, like, a perfect triangle. Um, so, most of the cases... You know, the trend line and resistance line is going to be like pierced a little bit. It won't look exactly like that. You'll, sometimes you'll see some piercings, um, you know, which is kind of, you know, good to look out for. Um, some people think that these are going to be like exactly like that. You can see how like in this, you know, right here, it's pierced a little bit, it's pierced a little bit. You're kind of usually going from the um, open and closing on generally um, when you look at it. You're not really worried about the wicks too much, okay? Um, but yeah, just kind of knowing that um, strength is you know going to be set to the maximum, um, and you know it's suggested to kind of look out for false breakouts because sometimes they can you know easily be confused um, for you know what's truly about to happen, and the price is going to you know retreat back to the triangle. So generally speaking, with the you know ascending triangle, it is a bullish continuation pattern, which is what I wanted to show you guys here. Um, however, there are some exceptions where, you know, they might develop a downtrend um, and form and the triangle is going to reverse, uh, you know, breakouts can also happen in both directions. So it's kind of tricky there. With the ascending triangle, I'd say it's usually good to, you know, obviously you should be watching level two anyways. Most people try to anticipate the breakout. For me, I wait until the breakout has occurred until I get some kind of confirmation, okay? Um, and I kind of go over a little bit later on what confirmation looks like. But I'll wait for the confirmation. Um, majority of the breakouts, you know, of either direction are going to be observed in the second half of the pattern, uh, formation of the distance. So the best sense, you know, is kind of be measured between those two points. Um, you know, and, and volume behavior, you know, throughout the pattern can form, you know, a very, very risky, you know, thing to rely on. So, to kind of sum that up, let's say, for example, like we're looking at this pattern right here. And obviously at this point, let's say you're this far into the, you know, looking at the trend and you're like, okay, hey, it's starting to form a triangle. Some traders will try to like enter here, here, and here, trying to go along. And they don't realize that other traders who are, you know, trading understand that that's what you're looking at. And it could be at any time a whole bunch of them flooded and Realizing, you know, that you're, you know, there's buyers that's going to be coming in and they just drop it on you and it just dumps, kind of like how it does here. The price drop and when it drops, it typically drops almost to, you know, the same length of where, you know, it began. Um, so for me personally, I wait, you know, until the breakout has confirmed um, and, and it has broken out and shown strength there. Or I'll wait, you know, and save myself a headache if I'm going to try to long it and wait and see if it does actually break on if it doesn't, knowing that it's going to, you know, keep dropping. Um, so you can see how this is kind of a risky play, but I've watched this pattern so many times personally on different stocks that I, I'm pretty good at trading it. So, again, to each his own, the more you see this pattern, the more you'll, you know, get ready for it and know how to approach it and things like that, okay? Now with the descending triangle, um, same thing, two lines, um, you know, there's one for support um, and one that's drawn through the peaks after a downtrend has occurred, okay? Um, it basically overall signals, you know, that, you know, hey, relative to where, you know, it's at, 
price is going to continue to you know to go can continue to go down. Um, again, you won't see this in like a perfect condition, um, but they're usually seen as bearish continuation patterns. So it's continuing to be bearish. You're already coming off of a big drop, right? Now you're trying to recover, but as you're recovering, your limitation is happening where the pop back up is not really happening as much as you, as strong as you want it to be, which is a signal that, hey, this can continue to happen. As you can see here, as the highs get lower and lower and lower, eventually it cracks through the support line. You're getting support here, but eventually if the price isn't getting stronger there, it's going to eventually you know, crack down. And that's what you're getting with uh, descending triangles, letting you know that volume is more likely to fall through. Okay? Then there's the pennants. Now the pennants, um, they're a pretty fast forming, you know, triangle, um, so to speak. <laughs> um, not necessarily a triangle, but just, it's really just a pennant. Uh, it's like a small wedge um, after a, a steep trend has happened. So after you got like a long pop up or a long downtrend, it starts to wedge through. Okay, that's called a pennant. Excuse me. All right. Um, usually what happens is the preceding trend behind it is kind of crucial for the uh, pattern formation. And, you know, it's like the pennant pole. So the slope is then, you know, kind of controversial. Um, some people prefer it to be like super steep. Some people don't, you know, so it forms the pennant. Um, some people say, oh, it's okay to be like a, you know, 45 degree angle, uh, which is kind of like, you know, the most ideal for everyone. Um, I say to each his own. I mean, it really, you know, it really depends. Um, on a few things, but as long as you have some type of pole there, I, I assume, you know, no matter what degree it's in, um, you know, it's considered a pennant in my opinion. Um, so, main thing you want to notice is the wedge of it. Um, you want that to be completed. So, breakouts can happen in both directions here as well, too. Um, I like pennants. They're okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm the best at trading them, but you know, it depends on how long the pendant is. Um, these are a little bit shorter than the triangles. Um, but, you know, you still have that high, low, high, low, and then, you know, converging. And the, the breakout is either going to be, you know, above or below. Okay? One's bullish, one's bearish. All right? I mean, your confirmation isn't until it breaks out of that, you know, breaks out of that high or breaks out of that low. Um, so, you know, if you look at the difference between the bullish and the bearish pendant formation, is usually one that's coming from a run up, which is this one, bullish, or one that's coming from a run down, which is, you know, bearish. So after a big spike has happened, it's starting to pull back, and it's trying to go up again, and it's pulling back, and then it's going to eventually crack through and take off. Or here, you know, it has a long, steep drop down, then it goes up, comes back down, and it tries to go up again, and it's going to continue to go back down. Another continuation pattern, okay? Now, let's talk about the flags. Um, so, flags are, you know, quickly forming, you know, formation patterns that happen. Um, they usually appear after a small channel, you know, from a, from a steep trend, as you can see here. Um, after uptrend has happened, you know, basically, uh, it has like a, a little downward slope. And after the downtrend, a little bit of an upward slope, which is right here. Okay, so this is called a flagpole right here. This is the pole of the flag, and it's the flag waving in the wind. And then, of course, the uptrend continues. All right. Um, the question of the slope, you know, preceding the trend is kind of controversial too. Some people prefer it to be like a super steep pole, which is what I kind of like to see. Um, some people say it could be at a 45 degree angle. I mean, it varies from person to person too. Uh, me personally, I just like to see a long pole. Pause. Um, it's something that's, you know, really distinguishable. Because um, with flagpoles, they can break out in both directions, too, either upward or downwards. Um, you know, so it's just kind of you know, a little bit harder to determine, you know, depending on your preference. Um, but it usually, it usually, to me, 
um, depends on the initial price change. That kind of defines the flagpole. Um, if it changed like more than 90% in a direction, usually, you know, heavy poles, but you know, declines throughout the formation usually happen. So if this thing like jumped substantially, like how here it went from, I mean, the wick was all the way down here like 250 and jumped all the way up to like 450. I mean, that's a big formation of the flagpole right there. And as the price is pulling back, it's not, you know, pulling back much, and then eventually it breaks. So right here at this point, you know, a flagpole is forming, and if it breaks through the high, you know, continuation is coming. All right, head and shoulders. You guys probably have heard this one a lot. Um, a lot of traders might talk about it. Um, this one's a pretty, you know, for me, this is one of the harder formations for me to understand um, and be able to actually see until I started really, you know, seeing patterns and recognizing them after, you know, like a couple of years um, and also being able to find the tricks. Let me show you guys afterwards uh, to be able to, to identify them. I, at this point, you know, this is one of the harder patterns for me to, to understand how they work. But let's kind of talk about it. So the head and shoulders formation is, is um, you know, known for the bullish performance it has. Um, and you know what you'll typically see is a series of three peaks the one in the middle is going to be the highest which is the head and then the first and the third one is going to be the shoulders okay and they're usually around the same height I think I did another separate video on this in the course and I showed you guys real time like hey I recognize this that this is the head and shoulders watch what happens as it breaks down and you know you can short it it's pretty easy okay um, well you know the first and third you know, typically need to be lower than the head. It's not really required um, that they're being the same height. Um, you know, on, you know, stats and the patterns, you know, to the left right here, kind of show that the performance is similar. Um, you can see here, it's similar to here. It doesn't necessarily have to be that, but, you know, it, it is ideal. And of course, this right here is a neckline. So a key thing you want to kind of notice is, you know, after the strong uptrend has happened, look at where, you know, the support is showing and if you know you got two support levels here and three support or three uh, resistance levels here what are they you know what are they showing you um, you know and, and that's after a, a massive uptrend has happened that signifies this particular pattern signifies that a reversal is about to happen um, and you know in proportion to what has already happened with the series of series run up okay um, and a lot of short traders, you know, when they see this, they load the boat and drag the stock back to reality. <laughs> um, value is usually the highest when it's up here on the left. Um, but most likely, you know, it's going to deplete once the breakout has happened and the trend, you know, becomes more favorable as it becomes, as it comes down and the pullback occurs. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much how the head and shoulders work. And as you can see here in this next video, or in the next video, this next um, picture, that ideally the line isn't as straight as you might want it to be, but you know it's still kind of there. You don't you don't want to waver this neckline too much, but this is still a good you know indication that the breakdown is happening. Okay, and even if you was to draw it like right here, you'd still be okay. But yeah, this is kind of showing you, here's the neckline, left shoulder, here's the peaks, then it's starting to pull back, here's another head, here's the head, all right, and then pull backs, and then here's the shoulder, okay? Then there is the inverse head and shoulders. So obviously, you know, it's pretty much the flip side of the head and shoulders, upside down. You got, you know, support here, resistance there. So, it, you know, it pulls back, and then here's another neckline, it pulls back some more, here's another neckline, it pulls back, it comes up some more, and then it's going to break the root. Um, so that's kind of pretty much how that works. Just kind of think of the head and shoulders, but flip upside down. Okay. Oop. Sorry. Double bottom. So double bottom is uh, pretty easy. Um, there's also the double top that we'll cover here in a second, but it's basically the inverse to it. Um, it's one of the most simple formations. Um, I like seeing that because you know that there's you know buying pressure here, 
this is a, a good reverse pattern that I like to trade, and you know, it has a decent risk to reward for me. Um, so ideally, when I enter it in, I try to you know get in somewhere within this range here um, when doing it. But basically, what happens is you have two bottoms here. Um, you ideally want to see candlesticks that have the wicks um, pushing it up and opening the close. It's closing pretty strongly, and you can use any of the um, candlestick patterns that I showed you uh, in the other videos to be able to help identify this as well too. Okay. Um, but again, it's one of the most simplest forms of you know a reversal pattern. Uh, you know that you can easily identify. Okay. Double bottoms happen pretty frequently, so you'll see these throughout a lot of you know stocks that might have volume, um, but they also do occur pretty quickly. Um, you know, and depending on the chart time frame that you're looking at them, you know, it just depends on you know what you're looking for. But yeah, that's the double bottom. All right, here's the double top. What you obviously want to look for is, you know, two strong areas of resistance, usually in the same range. Um, and you'll have a neckline here of the support. So you have two tops, three support areas. And this is after a run-up has happened. So that's another key thing with the double bottoms and the double tops. Double bottoms, reversal pattern, because you just had a long, steep drop-off, and now support showing, and then it's trying to go back up, and then it's pulling back again, and it's trying to go back up, and it pops up. That's a reversal. With double tops, it's had a strong run up and it met some resistance, then it pulled back and it tried to go again and test the high again and it got pulled back. And now it's you know broken through. The neckline breaks. And that's another reversal pattern. It was going up and now it's going back down. Alright? Um, and again, I know this can you know kind of seem confusing because hey, you you know are just looking at candlesticks. You know, you you're not familiar with what other things you need to be looking at. Um, you know, to be able to help identify this. Don't worry, we're gonna go through it in a second. So, um, for those of you that are, you know, needing to know a lot more than this. But other than that, those are pretty much all the ones that I wanted to show you guys. Um, those are the most popular patterns you'll see shaders look for um, as far as continuation patterns and reversal patterns. So, what I suggest that you do is, you know, practice trying to identify these on, you know, this type of stocks that you trade. On really any time frame, um, you can do it on minutes, hours, days, weeks, all the above. Um, but yeah, try to see if you can identify these and you know what to look for. Okay, so if you guys have any questions about this, you know, let me know. Shoot me an email. I'll you know I'm more than happy to answer it for you. If you have a favorite, you know pattern that you trade, let me know what it is. I mean, I told you guys my favorite one was the ascending triangle. And it's just kind of beginner habits that never, you know, got away from me. I just, you know, like that pattern more than anything. So, um, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll get ready for the next one. All right, real quick, guys, let's go ahead and get into just kind of viewing semi-live what it looks like to be able to identify the patterns. Um, I know in the video I said that I was going to do um, a double top and a triple top. Uh, example pattern for you guys, but instead I did um, a double bottom and a double top. Um, essentially, just kind of look at a triple top as the same way a double top is, but just a little bit longer. Uh, for those of you who haven't in the course, I'll you know I'll go over it here again in a second. But this part of the video here, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, we're just going to cover the actual pattern, um, you know, and I'm going to show you guys in real time like how to kind of be able to you know just identify it. And if for the, those of you who are in the course, we're going to go over the exact you know, scenario of, hey, this is where you, at the point, you should recognize it. So we're just going to briefly touch over this part here in real time so you guys can just kind of get an idea uh, of it, okay? So, for example, here we're going to use LGBN. Um, this stock made a good move today, um, depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, it was 100% gainer today. Um, but you could have easily identified um, a pattern here and would have been able to easily profit it. Obviously, hindsight is 2020, but what I'm trying to demonstrate to you guys is, you know, if you kind of know this stuff, you know, beforehand, when you do see it in real time, you're like, oh, okay, that's what I, you know, that's what I already know, and here's how I play it and how to watch it, okay? So this is pretty much, you know, LGB and, you know, forming right here. 
and we'll speed it up a little bit here for just for time purposes of the video. I don't want to keep you guys too long. But let's say, you know, this is all pre-market. So obviously it's not, you know, much movement. Uh, we'll speed it up a little bit here. And I'll get to the point to where, you know, you guys will want to recognize it. This is still pre-market. Now there's opening bell. Okay. So right now, you know, this is where the, the stock is at. Um, and this is a little bit faster than what you will see in real time. So obviously in real time, you'll have more time to weigh and measure things and make a decision as a stock is moving um, and you know do what you need to do but basically you know obviously here it was dead all the way up until pre-market then it spiked on up um, you know and began to actually move an opening bell so let's speed it up here a little bit more to a point where I'm trying to get for you guys to be able to recognize this thing now obviously here we're on the one minute time frame um, so these patterns might be a little bit different to identify than others so let's go ahead and take a second here and kind of you know draw some lines here so obviously we got this little run up right here right so this more than likely would be areas of support and then this here would be areas of resistance now as you can see all throughout this you know time frame this thing has broken you know areas of resistance at this point Okay, and actually, let me zoom it in so we get a little bit more detail there. Voila. So, this right here is a perfect example of when you want to wait for a confirmation of a breakout. And you can see, obviously, let me rewind this a little bit if I can. Um, once that breakout happens, you have all this massive run up here. Um, and, you know, trying to decide, you know, when to get in, when to get out can be a little confusing if you don't have like a right time frame or anything like that, you know, that you're using to trade. So, again, this instance is the one minute. Now, obviously, the way it trades on a one minute might look differently on, you know, a 10 minute or 15 minute. And I'll show you guys why. Um, just because, you know, formations form within, you know, formations. Um, it's just kind of obvious. But, again, here you can see, you know, the main breakout point here is pretty much after the opening bell, which would have been right here. Um, sorry, I'm looking at messages. And then, uh, you know, you got some pullback and support shown right here. And this is basically trending up. So, I didn't cover this pattern here with you guys, but this would be essentially a channel up pattern. Um, you know, if you're watching it on the, you know, on the course or whatever, we're going to go over that here in a second. However, what I did want to show you guys who are watching it on YouTube and everything like that, how you don't have to stay with one minute. You can see here on the 15 minute, this one does the exact, you know, it does the exact same move. However, the pattern looks a little bit different and it's probably much easier for you to read as a beginner. And this is why a lot of times for you guys as beginners, I tell you it's better to trade, um, you know, on longer time frames as opposed to trying to trade by the minute or the second like people who scalp and who have been doing this for years because, you know, We've seen this countless times, but you as a beginner don't know what you're looking for. So you need to be trading on a larger time frame so you can see a bigger picture to be able to trade properly. And as you're doing it more and more and more, the smaller your time frame gets, the more well-versed you've probably been in the market. But this right here is an exact, an exact example of an ascending triangle where you as a trader would have been able to trade this because you know what to look for. And I'll show you guys here right now. So... Let's say, let me, let me close this out actually. And we'll start from the beginning again. 15 minute time frame or anything above is what I typically you know, say is good for new traders, I think, in my opinion, to start out with. Obviously, the longer the time frame, the better. But, you know, to each his own. You also want to you know, try to adjust the time frame to what fits your you know, trading ability. Not everybody has 15 minutes throughout the day to be able to trade, you know? Um, but it varies from person to person. So, take a look at this here. There's your flagpole from off the initial spike. Obviously, you would have found this, you know, from an alert, <laughs> uh, from one of the alerts, you know, it would have popped up. And then you start to draw your lines. You know, there's your initial flagpole, and everything is starting to form right here. The highs are pretty much, let me pause it a little bit. And obviously, it wouldn't move that fast in real life. But as you're drawing your pattern, you're recognizing, hey, wicks 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 look at that you know this these highs are getting lower and lower 
and these lows are getting higher and higher. So what does that tell you? What does the ascending triangle tell you? It's going to do what? Either break up or break down. And whenever it does either one of those, that is going to be your move. And you guys seen me drawing this in countless videos, not just ascending triangles, you know, patterns period. If you haven't, go back and look at some of the videos that are on the YouTube channel, guys. You see me doing that plenty of times. Um, but I'm just, I mean, I can visually see it myself because I've been doing this for a long time. But if you haven't, you know, practice it. Um, but look, check this out. See, boom. Now you got some good, there's your breakout. So if you know what a ascending triangle is, you know that breakout, you would have probably jumped in on this candle, that candle, and had a good risk to reward ratio probably somewhere right here. But, of course, you, being the trader that you are, knowing this stuff, you would have easily had a quick little dollar move, made money, and then left it alone, okay? And I was going to go over another pattern here on the same stock, um, but, you know what, why not? So after that, and you can already see it right here, at this point, you should be able to see another pattern where you could have profited from. After you had taken your profits here, at this point, you could have also gotten the profits again from doing another pattern. And I didn't cover this one with you guys on the YouTube channel, but if, you, you know, if you're watching it or well, if not, you can look it up on your own. Um, or if you're watching it, of course, you know what I'm talking about as well, too. Okay, But you got a simple falling wedge here, and you see it right here. There's another flagpole from the big run-up. Now, falling wedge. I didn't cover this with you guys on YouTube. You can look it up on your own time, but for those of you in the course, you know what a falling wedge is. This is easily identifiable right there it breaks out of the falling wedge and it pops up just like you know it's supposed to it's not a flag because you know it's not you know forming the flag formation go back and look at what the flag formation is but it's a falling wedge because of the formation that it's you know starting to do and where it breaks out at and simple you know once it breaks out you can you know ride that continuation on up there you should know what the you know what the pattern is for the falling wedge and easily profit it there. Okay? So just want to kind of cover that with you guys and I can speed this up and you can kind of see how it looks. See? Um, but obviously this is after hours right here. But yeah, look at that. Two trades on a 15 minute time frame, you can make some decent money. So this is why knowing patterns are important, guys. Because, you know, not just you who are learning it, but also other traders who are learning it or know it. And essentially it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> um, you know, because so many people believe it's going to happen, and it actually does happen, unfortunately. Yeah, patterns and, you know, pattern trading isn't like an exact science, but it is a good idea to help you, you know, measure your risk to reward, understand what other traders are thinking about, get to the mindset of other traders on what they are considering as well, too, so you can find your edge in the market, all right? Um, so that's pretty much, you know, the example there, guys. Um, again, with the triple top thing, you can go look that up as well, too. Sorry I didn't put that on there, but essentially it's just, you know, triple top set within a, a trading channel that it breaks out but <laughs> that's pretty much it guys i hope this video kind of helped you be able to you know identify some patterns and the common patterns that are out there that traders look at how to you know utilize them um for those of you again that are in the course you know keep watching this video as we go into it i'm going to show you um some more detail on how to be able to you know identify them and know when to draw the trend lines and when not to and the different time frames and a little bit more we're going to cover here but for those of you that are watching on youtube i hope you enjoyed this video let me know you know if you have any questions about any of it, i'll be more than happy to answer it for you um if you like this video definitely please give me a thumbs up i you know i love it when you guys are you know looking at the stuff and learning a little bit more or if you have any other questions let me know um, again, if you have a great pattern that you like, you know, that works well, comment it below. I'd I love to hear, you know, trade. I even had traders make up their own pattern. So I'd love to hear it from you guys, um, you know, get some good feedback. So hopefully this helps, you know, until next time, guys, stay green. All right, guys. So that wraps it up here. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, again, sorry about the triple top, triple bottom thing. But anyways, you can look that up on your own. But I really hope you enjoyed this video and us discussing, you know, chart patterns that are pretty basic and pretty simple, you know, for beginner traders. OK, um, again, do me a favor. If you haven't already, definitely hit that like button, comment below um, whether or not you like the video. If you got something, you know, you want to contribute, definitely would help out, you know, anyone else who might be, you know, viewing this video. Um, if you want to learn more, you know, links below for descriptions of the course and all that good stuff. 
um, or just you know join our free Facebook group and learn from traders see the different content I'm posting there for you guys all the time and just you know help yourself become a better trader that's pretty much what I'm here for so if you have any questions you know don't hesitate to shoot me an email drop a comment anything all the above I'm here to help you guys out all right so until next video stay green